Okay, this is 7.3, uh, ratio, proportion, and well, I'm going to leave out uh, this one, uh, variation, we'll put that on a different video. Um, so, ratio, we're going to talk about writing ratios, we're going to then talk about unit pricing, and then we're going to solve some proportions, I believe. Uh, this is this would be something that you've got a lot of experience with, but this will just be a nice refresher for you. Uh, fairly basic stuff, basic concepts here. We're comparing things uh, at the most basic uh, levels. Uh, you know, moving forward, you're going to want to know this though, uh, because it becomes very powerful later. Okay, so a commonly used we're talking about writing ratios. A commonly used mathematical concept is a ratio. A baseball player's batting average is a ratio. Uh, if we talk about a baseball player's batting average, we take his number of hits divided by his number of at-bats, and we punch it into our calculator and we get uh, his batting average. For instance, if he gets uh, four hits out of nine at-bats, uh, we would have four over nine. We would go ahead and get our calculator, four divided by nine, and he would be batting 444. Pretty good start to the, to the day, to the season. Maybe that was a doubleheader. Okay, so 444 is a pretty good average. Good average in baseball would be 3.3, uh, or 300 average, as they call it. 3 out of 10. If you get a hit 3 out of 10 times, uh, you're at 300, uh, and you can make $100 million. Okay? Uh, the slope, or pitch of a roof on a building, may be expressed as a ratio. So if we look at the, the a roof, uh, what they do is they're looking at this piece right here. Obviously, this would be our roof, and what they do is they take kind of the rise over the run, almost like your slope uh, idea, well, slope of a roof, okay? Um, and they'll take the rise over the run, so let's say it, it rises 5 for every 10 feet of run, and they would say 5 over 10, uh, okay, uh, 0.5. Uh, ratios provide a way of comparing two numbers or quantities. Remember, so here we're comparing rise over run, here we're comparing hits to at bats. A ratio is just a way of comparing two numbers or quantities. Okay, so the ratio of a number A and the number B is written A to B. So there, what what you want to got to get out of this slide is that there's three ways to write a ratio. And on my math lab, you might be asked to to write them in three different ways. Okay, so we have A to B, A T O two B, A to B. This is the most common one. This is mo our most uh, com what we're going to use in math the most. This fraction rep representation that I showed you previously and then we can also use colons A to B okay uh, you'll see this in things like gambling uh, types of ratios uh, same thing with this one A to B 3 to 1 uh, okay uh, when ratios you use comparing units of measure the units should be the same so this is going to be uh, lead us into the next idea uh, meaning we're going to have to translate units to the same unit if we're comparing units of measure uh, an example here, uh, we want to write a ratio for the phrase 8 hours to 2 days. We're going to compare 8 hours to 2 days. Notice our measurements are in hours and days. We have to get on the same page here. So uh, because we don't want to change, because an 8 hours is not a complete day, uh, let's go ahead and change everything uh, to days, or sorry, to hours, uh, because we don't want parts of days. So we can compare 8 hours uh, to 2 days. Change the days to hours. We will leave eight hours on top, but we know each day is 24 hours. Uh, so two days is 24 hours, and 24 hours would be 48 hours. Okay, so here's our ratio. Eight hours to 48 hours, except we want to go ahead and reduce. Uh, eight goes into 48 six times, so the top is one, and then the bottom is six. It's, and then, of course, the hours also cancel. Hours on top, hours on bottom, we'll cancel those out. And we get this 1 to 6 ratio. We write as a fraction 1 to 6. But we could also write it 1 to 6 or 1 colon 6. Okay? We end up with this 1 to 6 ratio. Remember to cancel out your measurements if possible. Hour on top, hour on bottom. Reduce. Okay, cancel each other out. Another example, write the ratio uh, as a fraction in lowest term. We're going to compare in hours. So now we have 42 hours. We're going to compare that to 5 days. So we write it as a ratio, as a fraction. Uh, sorry, 42 hours. Keep the 42 hours on top. Five days we know uh, need to change to hours, so we're really going to have 5 times 24 hours. 
Uh, 5 times 24, I think, is 120 hours. And I think this can reduce. They're both even, so I'm going to reduce both by 2, and I get 21 uh, over 60. Uh, those both reduce by 3, so I'm going to get 7 uh, 20. 7 to 20 is our ratio. We could write 7 to 20. We could write 7 colon 20. Okay, hours canceled out, sorry, a long time ago. All right, so uh, now if we weren't so concerned about hours and days, uh, you know, it's not very practical to be concerned about those, but it is practical to be concerned about unit pricing. Okay, we all want to make the best deal. All right, uh, nobody talks about the bad deals that they got. Nobody talks about how, hey, I went to uh, the car dealership the other day and I paid $24,000 for a $9,000 vehicle. High five. That never happens. Okay, uh, because we all we all want to be think we're savvy shoppers. Okay, unit pricing. This idea of ratios and unit pricing allow us to become more savvy shoppers. All right, uh, ratios can be applied in unit pricing to see which size of an item offered in different sizes produces the best price per unit. To do this, set up the ratio of the price to the item to the number of units on the label, then divide to obtain the price per unit. And what they're talking about is, look, I go to the store, and this box of cereal uh, might be 10 ounces, okay, all cereals, all different size boxes, and it might be 239, okay? And then I have another box of cereal that's a different size, okay? It's still the same brand of cereal, same picture on the front, but maybe it's 14 ounces. doesn't look much different. It's not much different. It's four more ounces, okay? But it might be uh, three... Uh, 39 okay and we want to know which one's a better deal which one should we buy okay some people just go instantly for the better price uh, some people just go for more uh, we need to what we want to find out is when how are we getting the most cereal for uh, our, our money's worth okay and what we do is we go ahead and just we take our uh, ounces um, or we take the price 239 uh, on the first one and just divide it by the ounces Okay, two dollars and thirty-nine cents for ten ounces uh, is going to be. Um, let's get our calculator out because I'm going to use my calculator again. So I divide by ten and I get point two three nine. So it's point two three nine cents per ounce. Okay, let's look compare that to the price of the other one. I got three thirty-nine uh, for fourteen ounces. So I get out my calculator and I got three point. Whoops. 339 divided by 14 ounces and it comes out to 0.24 uh, so which is the better buy well actually the 10 ounce cereal is the better buy it's cheaper it's 0.239 cents per ounce compared to 24 cents per ounce okay and that's what we're looking at here if you ever see people um, with their calculators out at the especially like Sam's Club that's what Sam's Club and the big warehouse Costco, those places, they thrive on this stuff. You can buy huge amounts of stuff cheaper, okay, uh, if they sell it uh, in bulk, okay? So let's find the unit price of a 16-ounce box of cereal that has a price of 336. Well, I'm going to take my 336. I'm going to divide it by 16. No big deal. Get my calculator out. And I get 21 cents, okay? So 21 cents per ounce. Uh, here, which has the lower unit price? This would be bars of soap. Brand A is $1.53 for three bars. Brand B is $1.61 for four bars. Some people say, well, $1.53 is cheaper. That's what I'm going to buy. Uh, but let's go ahead and find the unit price. $1.53 divided by three is going to be 0.51. $1.61 divided by four is going to be 0.4. So, which is the better deal? Uh, obviously, brand B. You're going to go with brand B. That's the type of stuff you're going to see on the homework. Uh, last idea uh, in, in 7.3 that I want to cover is proportion. Uh, proportion is a statement that says two ratios are equal. We have a comparison of 1 compared to 2, a comparison of 3 to 6, and then an equal sign which compares both ratios to each other. All right? Now, 
When we solve proportions, you guys have all seen this, we do what's called the cross product or the cross multiplication, okay? Where we have this uh, ratio compared to this other ratio in a proportion, and we take the top left times the bottom right, and then we equal it to the bottom left times the top right, okay? And this helps us to solve. Maybe not when all four of our pieces here are variables, but they won't be. In your homework, you'll be given uh, one variable that you'll be asked to solve for. Okay, but make sure you're crossing these and make sure, very important, that you keep your equal sign here. Now, why does this work? Well, if we go back to our old algebra that we did in 7.1, uh, we don't like fractions, right? So if I wanted to get rid of fractions, what would I do? I'd multiply by the common denominator. I'd multiply this times BD and I'd multiply this times BD. And when I do that, the B's cancel, and I end up with AD on this side equals, and then the D's cancel, CB, which is what we got here, AD equals BC. Okay? That's why this works. It's just uh, kind of a slick move to do the same old algebra that we've learned in 7.1. Okay? So, let's go ahead and solve a proportion. All right? Uh, I don't know uh, how to go from 4 to 22 nice and neatly. Okay, Sometimes people just can expand the fraction. Uh, for instance, if this were 20, 4 to 20 is times 5, so I'd take the bottom times 5 and have 20 over 25. But it, 4 to 22 is a little bit more complicated, so I have to cross multiply. So I take my top left times my bottom right. 4 times x is 4x. Keep the equal sign. Don't be lazy math students. you got to have that equal sign there, otherwise you get lost. And then I take the bottom left times the top right, 5 times 22. So I get 4x equals 5 times 22 is 110. Now I divide by 4. 110 divided by 4. Get out my calculator. I get 27.5. You could also reduce this. Uh, you could, uh, as a fraction, 27 and a half would also be fine. Okay. Now this one's a little bit more complicated, but notice we have a fraction equaling a fraction. This is a proportion. Okay, we're jumping right into the deep end here. Uh, after a brief introduction of proportion, this is going to be one of the tougher ones that you see. But we still take the top left times the bottom right. So I'm going to write 3 times 5r plus 45 equals, keep that equal sign, don't lose it, bottom left times top right. 20 times 3r minus 36. Now I go ahead and simplify both sides. Getting rid of parentheses, 3 times 5r is 15r. 3 times 45, I better get out my calculator. I think it's 135, but I'll go ahead and check. 3 times 45 uh, is, is 135, so plus 135 equals 20 times 3r is 60r. And then 20 times minus 36, I definitely need my calculator here. 20 times 36 is 720. Keep that minus sign. Okay, so now I'm rid of parentheses. Now I want to uh, go ahead and get the numbers on one side, letters on the other. Uh, I want to move my, let my 15R over because my I have more R's over here and I like to keep things positive. So I'm going to go ahead and move the 15R by subtracting it because it was a positive 15R. I'm going to subtract 15R. 60 minus 15R is 45R. I keep the minus 720, I keep the 135, and I keep the equal sign. Now I have my letters on the right side, so that means my number here, 720, has to go to the other side. Well, if it's minus 720, I have to do the opposite. I have to undo it. I add 720 to both sides, plus 720. When I do that, I get 855 equals 45R. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide by 45, divided by 45, 855 divided by 45 gives me 19. R must be 19. And you can always check here to see if this is right. Is 5 times 19 plus 45 divided by 20 equal to 3 times 19 minus 36 divided by 3? Well, let's do the math. 5 times 19. 5 times 19 plus 45 divided by 20 
is 7. So I get 7 on the left. Is that equal to the right side? Let's see, 3 times 19 minus 36 divided by 3 is 7. So 7 equals 7. I know I've got the problem right. Uh, so this is what the type of stuff you're going to see in your homework. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.